How's your day going? Oh, it's good, good. Well, my day just started here. I know you're toward the end of yours, but you look bright and chipper. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. Time. No, good. It's a good day. Good day. We've got several builds I, going I hope on. You're, right you, now. you're in your office at the moment, or you're in your workshop? Well, I'm in same thing. My office is my workshop. Your we office is the, your workshop. That's the case with most tiny house builders. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It's all right here. So All we've right. got a little, we've got the showroom here, we've got the office, and then we've got the production facility behind me. All and right. Hopefully the guys I hope come I'm right pronouncing here. your name name right. Is it Lou Pereira? Yeah, Lou Pereira. Lou Pereira, because we had a lot of confusion about how to pronounce each other's name. I know, I know. It's Atesh, right? It's Atesh. 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 Say, it? say it again. It's Atesh. Atesh. And it's Lou right? Pereira. Yeah. All right, <laughs> there we go. Let's begin. We got it. We got so it. We're Lou, on the what? same page. What brought you to the business of building tiny houses? How was the idea born? Where did it all start? You know, it, it's, it's 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 pretty interesting because you know I come from uh, factory construction background. I mean, just, I've been doing this since you know I was knee high to a grasshopper making stuff, and so you know I've been in this industry, factory built structures for most of my adult life. Um, so it was probably 2014. When my older son Ryan, uh, who spearheaded heads our our marketing, um, said, "Hey, Dad, what do you think about tiny houses?" And to be honest with you, my first exposure to tiny houses is I attended a show in Seattle, Washington, and I walked into my first tiny house. And I, I'm 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 not a big guy. I'm 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 five seven. And I walk in this tiny house and it looks like a, a cabin. It's cedar sided, cedar inside, little bitty windows. And I'll tell you what, um, the, the countertops were shallow to make room to walk down the middle of the kitchen. And, and, and it was it was claustrophobic. I, I remember climbing the ladder to get up into the loft and looking into the loft. I mean, it was like, have you, have you ever been spelunking? You know, crawling in caves, that's what it felt like. Dark, one window at the end, um, it was claustrophobic. It was tight. It, it was horrible. And so my son calls me and says, hey, dad, 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 tiny houses, tiny houses. We got to start building tiny houses. And if you come from factory construction, this should be a pretty good end. And I said, well, I mean, geez, Ryan, I, I walked into one in Seattle. It was dark and dingy and skinny and tight. And I felt claustrophobic. I go, no, 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 nobody's going to want those. No, 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 no. Come on. You got to you got to come and look at them with me. So I flew down to California. I'm in Oregon. And we went out and toured uh, a manufacturer that was there, one of the originals. And um, I said, you know, this kind of looks like the same thing that I saw. You know, it's it, it doesn't really cut. No, but they're they're building them and they're, the business is good. So I made the decision to build one and, and we built one. And it was cedar siding. It was cedar inside, red roof, a little bitty porch. Um, but I put granite countertops in it, stainless steel appliances in it, uh, 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 upgrade, fancy, fancy floor, nice fixtures, um, and nice finishes. I said, okay, let's do one, but let's 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 bougie it up a little bit. And so we did, and we attended that. That same show that I that I saw the first one um, in Seattle, and people liked it, and we started getting attention, and so I said, okay, let's design another one. And the second house I designed was my Castle Peak model, and that was a 24 foot model at the time, and and I started experimenting, different finishes, made it more contemporary. Um, Nice, but I didn't say on my first house too, it's on Mount Everest. I put a larger, taller loft <clears throat> inside. I put bigger windows in it. I put egress windows in the loft areas and built it to certified RV code. Um, so financing could happen. People could haul it if they wanted to haul it themselves um, to make it easy. And so but back to what I was talking about, the Castle Peak, we, we, I built the Castle Peak. And whoa, we had HGTV attended that show Wonderful. and said, "Hey, we 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 like it. Do it. Do, it'll feature you in one of our House Hunter episodes." Really? 
I said, yeah. Okay. So right after that show, we 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 hauled that Castle Peak 600 miles south into California because we were in Seattle. No, it was more like almost 900 miles to 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 do their show to to film it, and that kind of started us on a pretty good path. And and after that, you know, the bulk of my designs have been contemporary, have been high end finishes. Um, attention to detail have been always been you know a, a, a focal point for for me and my guys and everybody here knows it um and, and I think that and it's been fun you know I, I I really like the design element I like experimenting with things doing different things I, I get bored my, my ADHD does not let me stay like this and do the same thing again and again and that's you know that's kind of a it's fun. But yet sometimes it can be a challenge for people around me. I like the creative element. I like trying new stuff. And it all doesn't work. It all doesn't, you know, come, wow. Sometimes it's, what the heck did I do that for? I'm not going to show this to anybody. We're going to, we're changing it up. We're going to do what, says the guy. It's like, I don't like it. I don't like it. It's not what was in my mind's eye. And so, you know, a lot of the stuff is, exper it just it, you know, it, it's experimenting with and seeing what's going to work and seeing really what's, what feels good, looks good, and what's going to be accepted in the marketplace. Um, so there's a there's a there's a pretty good amount of variety in in what we do here and how we do it, um, and it, and it's been enjoyable. It really has been for the most part. It's been enjoyable. So based yeah. on a so previous I mean, conversation, I now know that you loathe swamps. But what is the strange affinity you have with mountains? Because almost all your tiny homes are dubbed after a peak. Even the company's name is Tiny Mountain Houses. What's the story behind it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Some goofy conversation after a few beers and maybe some other mind-altering substances. I'm kidding. Um, you know, we're just trying to look for it. We're looking for something different. And I think that, you know, it, it really was the, the, the tiny and the mountain, you know, being little and then mountain being big. It's uh, an oxymoron. It, uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that, and that's really where it came from is, is that, and it, you know, now it's TMH um, and, and it's still tiny mountain houses. I mean, it, we're not going to change it at this point. It's been what, seven years. So it, it's been a while. Yeah. So how do you perceive tiny house movement in USA? I sometimes feel that it actually started as a fad and then after pandemic, it turned out to be a full-blown movement. When did yeah, it I, actually started garnering a lot of attention that people really got serious about it? Well, you know, I'll tell you what, even pre-pandemic, I think that, you know, with, with all the, you know, you got the media looking for more to put out there, looking for interesting stories and, and maybe at that time, uh, pre-pandemic, it, it was a fad in a lot of people's eyes. But I think that it was a growing movement from, from a long time ago. And I think that it's been going on for decades. You know, some people have said to me that, you know, the Northwest of the U.S. is the epicenter of, of tiny houses. And maybe it is. You know, I like to think so because I'm here. Um, I, I think that what's happened is, when the pandemic did hit, I'll tell you what, it, it freaked us out because we had had a fair amount of orders in the backlog that we we're going to build. And right after it hit, in fact, we had attended a show in San Diego, um, got a few builds uh, contracted from that show. We get back. And at that point, it was the shutdown. Um and the brakes got slammed on and the phone call started coming in. Lou, sorry, I, you know, I'm com uncomfortable. I don't know what my job's going to be. I don't know if we can afford this now. You know, I think I have to rat hole my savings because we don't know. We're afraid. Um, and the bottom dropped out. It did. It, it, I mean, it freaked us out. And, oh, my gosh. You know, what's happening here? And then it was kind of interesting because it took a couple of months, maybe. Then people started kind of getting the idea in their head, well, wait a minute, this is how it's going to be, and I'm going to be working from home. Or I need to be concerned long-term about, about living and what it's going to cost me to do that. The, the phone started ringing again, and the emails started coming in, and people started talking about tiny houses again. 
with a new vigor, with a with a new interest, with a hey, this makes sense now. So it, it, it really was interesting to see how that whole process developed um, after the pandemic. And and it's been busy since. I mean, we haven't stopped. Um, it's it, it, it really interesting. So so to answer your question about you know where's it going? I don't think it's going to slow down. I mean, as I look at the market, I look at you know, keep in mind what we're building could, are. Could we see more people adapting tiny house lifestyle, say five years from now? Yeah, I, I think so. I think I think so, and I think that you know, initially my mindset was that the the folks buying tiny houses were going to be the millennials. We're going to be the younger part of the population, you know, and, and that's not the case. It isn't the case. It, it, it proved me wrong. So uh, because what I'm finding now is people are buying tiny houses and most of them, you know, the decision maker in most of the houses that we build anyway are, are usually a middle-aged woman, you know, whether it's for their kids or their parents um, or, or a loved one, you know, it's, 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 it's her. Um, and sometimes they don't know what they want until they see it. And so I think that that's a value for us because of the variety that we do offer. It's as well, you know, if that one doesn't cut it for you, you know, look at this one, look at that, you know, the finishes need to be. And so, you know, I think that flexibility really helps in the process. But back to what I was talking about, it's, it, it really, it's not that, that younger person, you know, and, and since we have the ability to, because we're building to the RV code to finance, and and some finance now the rates are a little bit high right now, but but still you know to be able to finance and pay less for your tiny house along with you know including you know where you're going to park it um, and utilities to pay less for that all those items than you would for a rental an apartment um, is attractive for a lot of people because it's mine. You know what? If I want to move, I move, and nobody's going to keep my deposit because there's a spot on the floor because it's mine. Right. And so the mobility factor, I think, really plays into it as well. So I think when people start looking at it, so, well, you know, there's a lot of positives in doing this versus what I was doing before. And it, now, I'm not saying that everybody that does this is, is, was living in an apartment before they did, but I'm saying it's a good example of of living costs. And and then you know, for the people that have been living in you know, McMansions for years and years and years. Now, you know, you find empty nesters, you know, the kids are gone. Why don't I have this big honking house with all these rooms? And, you know, what do I need four bathrooms for? And, you know, five bedrooms, it's just two of us. And all I do is, you know, the kitchen, watch TV, the bedroom and hang out outside. And so why am I paying taxes for all this? And, you know, maybe, you know, they've already paid their house off or, or maybe they're already pay, still making payments. So, so, you know, you start thinking about that and saying, this don't make no sense no more. And they make a change. And so it's interesting to see that. You know, I've even had folks that have, that have bought tiny houses and, and said, uh, you know, they're retirement age folks and put the tiny house on their property and say, I'm going to move into that or we're going to move into that and we're going to travel. We're going to vacation and we're going to either rent out the big house or let the kids move into it, um, but they make the change um, for their lifestyle. And, and speaking of speaking of people who have actually retired, there's a certain misconception or notion I shall say that tiny houses on wheels are not for the people who have retired or are old age. What's your take on that? I, I think that that tiny houses in general, the people that are buying them to, that, that are retired, they're active. They, they want to be involved. They want to do stuff. They're still motivated to get out there and, and live their best life and see the world and do the things they love to do and not be encumbered by the responsibilities of that, you know, big lawn, lawn that they have to mow and the, the garden to take care of and the house to maintain. I don't want to deal with that crap anymore. You know, let's 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 live it. Let's let it go. It's not important anymore. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. It does. You mentioned three key elements in your website when you're talking about tiny houses, which is comfort, craftsmanship, and affordability. How do you ensure all these elements are catered? Well, I think, you know, the craftsmanship is is always a key point. Comfort, um, you know, I think that, that that word it might be different 
for one person than it is for another. So it's kind of figuring out what that is for you or what that is for, for the wife. And then sometimes meeting in the middle, you know, or finding a solution for that. Um, comfort can be, you know, a place for my surfboards, you know, a spot for my fishing gear, um, you know, a place to stash my firearms, you know, that's comfort, that's security for them. So let's figure out how to do that for you. Um, and I think that that's, that's a big part of, of, of what we do is ask questions, you know, how do you, how do you live? What do you need? What's important to you? Um, and it's by having those conversations that we're not, you're not pigeonholing somebody into buying just this. You get, well, this is all I got. No, I mean, let's figure out what's going to make you happy and, and, and what you need. And, 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 and really, you know, that falls into your budget. And so there's a lot of factors that go into that um, to make that work. Cause I want you to be happy. I want you, once you get your tiny house, I don't want any surprises. You know, you shouldn't be calling me saying, Hey Lou, we didn't talk about this. No, we, I want to talk about all this. I want to talk about how you cook, how you live, what your hobbies are, you know, your pets, or you have visitors, you know, what, what is it? What is it? So we've covered almost all your tiny homes, but one thing, and you can correct me if I'm wrong on this. One thing that I find a little disappointing is that not much attention has been paid to home office. Like there's no designated space for it. Could we see one in the, one of your upcoming models that you have a proper space designated to home office? I think that, you know, I call this, uh, um, you know, we do uh, a lot of houses with flex space. And that flex space can be what you want it to be. It could be a you living know, room. It could be a your living room, office, you know, a, a spot for your pet iguana or your bird or, you know, whatever, you know, your cat, dog. But I think that once again, that falls back into, I think we kind of cover that with comfort a little bit. You know, what do you need? You know, what are you doing? I mean, if you do you need office space, can that office space simply be a, a Murphy table that folds up and down? You know, you know, no, Lou, I got two monitors and, you know, I'm a designer and I need to, you know, we do meetings. So, you know, we design the space based on that need. Um, so really, you know, it's finding the right floor plan, you know, finding the right space and, and, and then designing a spot to do, to have what they need to do what they want to do. Did that answer your question? Yeah, it does. So okay. brief us a little about your upcoming designs, because I'm really excited to see Mount Trenrier and Gabriella, especially like they're in your website, but they're upcoming. I've been seeing upcoming banner for yeah, like three, I know. months I, now. I, I, I know. You know what? Is I'll tell you what, for as long as they've been there, they've been in here longer. Oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> so, so I'm excited too. So um, as long as they're here, I am, I am expecting they'd be soon on ground too. <laughs> We've got, I mean, the the Rainier um, is is ninety five percent right now, and and oh my gosh! In fact, I just walked out this morning and met with the guys. Uh, we're starting the staging of that house and the final details of it, and it's little stuff at this point. Now it's we're finishing up the 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 uh, uh, black walnut butcher block uh, extension table. Um, it's got this beautiful, beautiful entertainment center. Um, and, and I think that now it's, it's filling in the staging. It's because I think that displaying our homes as if you lived in them, maybe not exactly like you would have, but giving the, the feel that, hey, you know, I can sit in this chair, kick back and play games, watch TV and listen to my music. You know, boy, I can lay on the bed up in the loft with the two reading lights and you know they can see themselves there and I, and I like to you know when I stage a house um I'll sit in there I'll just go I'll stand there and then I'll sit then I'll go into each corner of the room you know and figure out and, and a lot of times I'm biased because it's kind of based on you know well maybe not so much but a lot of stuff that I do but then again you know doing it as long as as I have you know, I like to think that I have a sense for what people like because I've done them and I've talked to so many people, you know, what are you going to do with this room? How would you like to see this? And so I take a little bit of a lot of those conversations to that, that I use to, to, to either um, stage the house or even design the house. So, you know, it's, it's morphed into, into what it is today. Um, but that house, the Rainier, oh man, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. 
I can't wait to finish it. I can't wait to do the video. How long uh, should we be waiting for it? Well, I think that, well, what I've got, what's pushing me right now is I've got a show that we're doing in Northern California, and I've slated that house for a display model there. So that show is in mid-August. So hopefully by then, we'll have done all the fine-tuning and, 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 and done the video. So mid-August, I would, I'm hoping to have a video out and all the details of the of the Rainier. Um, the other house that we're planning on displaying on in that show as well is the Mount Gabriella. And I think that that's going to be an awesome house too. Um, you know, as a single level, uh, 26, 32 with the porch. Um, yeah, I've, I've got some, dis, some, 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 some ideas on how we're going to always, then you know, what happens though, the first one, usually is not the end design because we walk in there, ah, move, turn, lower, twist. Um, and I know I drive everybody nuts, including myself. Like I said, it starts in here and it still rumbles around for a little while and then comes out in, in what we do. Um, but I'm really excited about that house as well. When you go to all these tiny house shows, do you meet other tiny house manufacturers as well and take inspiration for their home? Like, do you guys, yeah. you guys meet like, okay, your, your tiny mountain houses and you spot someone from Minimaliste or Fritz Tiny Homes there. I'm like, I'm in love with your models. I'm too jealous yeah. of you. Yeah, yeah. I think that, you know, one of the interesting things that I've found in this industry is that all of us, for the most part, stay in our own lane, you know, because I don't want to, I, I think it would be an insult for me to, if somebody were to come in my house and say, this looks just like so-and-so. I don't want that. I, I, I want to be, I want to be individual. I want. And there's this particular book. niche every tiny house maker has. Yeah. And everybody does have their own niche. I think, I think so pretty much. Um, but I do see a lot of elements that are absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, I, I mean, yeah. So. What's your personal tiny house? What's your personal favorite tiny house maker other than your own tiny mountain? Oh my house? god! No, no, that's gonna get me in trouble, man. I can't answer <laughs> that question. I no, 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 no. <laughs> All right, I take back my words. <laughs> there's some beautiful tiny houses out there. So I know there's a lot of builders out there that, boy, oh boy, they 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 really do focus on doing it and doing it right, you know, to perfection. And I and I appreciate. You know, the builders that do have that attention to detail, that do spend the time to, to, to I mean, it shows. I mean, it really does. It shows in their product. Um, you know, I think one of the things that we talked a little bit about shows. Having somebody walk into, and I've never experienced anything like this before, into something that 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 I've designed from the ground up staged from the bathroom to the to the to the to the lofts the kitchen all those pieces of art and, and walk in the door and I'll never forget the first time it happened just walking in and I'm not I'm not being arrogant I'm not trying to be arrogant at all I'm just sharing an experience and they walk, they walk, first off, I, I see them because I'll stand right inside the front door of most of our house and, and they'll see somebody walking up. They look, they walk from one end to the other. They look inside the windows. So they're really, they're checking us out. Then they walk inside and they walk up the steps into the front door and they just stop. And their mouth is agape. And their eyes are like this. And I'm just going, oh, my gosh. And they say, wow. Dude, That's that, is the, That's that, the that, that is the pinnacle. That's the pinnacle. It really is. It really, really is. Um, but, yeah, that's, I don't know how I got on a tangent, but but it's it's, it's, it's pretty killer. It's pretty killer to, to, to have that experience. Yeah. What's the total number of houses that you've built so far? Um, we ran a tally. Um, 200 and well, let's see, 250, 50. And by the end of this month, uh, those are built and delivered. Um, we'll have another 
what's today? You're simultaneously working at multiple homes or you're working one home at a time? No, we've got, we're doing multiples. We're doing multiples. I mean, we've got. You got to have a big team for it. Yeah, I mean, we don't have a big team. You know, I have, you know, we've got, it fluctuates based on the need, but I've got eight guys on a permanent basis. You know, they're here all the time. Um, and then it fluctuates based on, you know, what, what's happening. I've got some, uh, I've got some, uh, I can't get into too much detail on it because it's kind of proprietary at this point, but uh, I'm working on some stuff that's, I mean, next time we talk, maybe I'll share it with you, but it's, I All think right. it's, it's really niche and I think it's, a, it, it's something that's needed very much so in today's world. And I've said What's the best experience you've had working with the client and which is one of your favorite tiny house builds so far and any celebrity clients, if so, you got to tell me this. You know, after we introduced the Denali model, um, that house was kind of a flagship for us with the new wider units. Um, I met some folks in uh it was in seattle might have been portland i don't remember at a show that we had done a couple years ago and they loved the house um but they had some distinctive ideas on what they needed and what they wanted and i'd never built the tiny house with these these components before it and I, holy smokes you guys want a what they want a built-in 5500 hundred dollar coffee maker Whoa, I was afraid to touch it. A, 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 a Blue Star commercial propane range, absolutely beautiful. They painted it orange. They had it custom painted orange by the manufacturer. Um, a, 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 a bidet to toilet that, that senses you approaching and opens up and the light comes on and the warming fan comes on and goes, Holy smokes! I was afraid to touch that too, um, but but we did. We installed those items, and I'll tell you what: walking into that build once it was completed was just. I'm one of those. Wow, we did this, and and, and I'll tell you what: that customer, that couple, was so excited and so. I, I don't even know how to say it. When, when when they saw their house complete, I mean, it, it was this is it. This is it. This is it. You know, and, and I'll tell you, not a build goes by where you don't have some issues. Something comes up. Maybe we can't get a, a piece or a part, or something delays it. Especially you know you know post COVID. Um, but you know, for the most part. All of our customers, I like to think that that I have a, a good relationship with them and that we work through the bugs. And I think that there's a there's a certain amount of trust, understanding um, that has to exist for that to occur. And I like to think that that we have that with, with all of our buyers. And, and I think that that helps quite a bit because I have my buyer's best interest in mind always. I want them to be happy always. Um, it needs to make sense always, you know, if there's something in question, I'm going to ask, um, I don't make decisions, you know, without having a conversation because I want you to be happy. I want you to understand I want transparency. I want, I want to, I want to keep that trust level. Yeah. Yeah. Second part of the question, Good. celebrity clients that you've had or someone, uh, uh actor or know, sports person who requested to build a tiny home. Um, yes, you know, unfortunately, when you start dealing with that clientele, I can't talk about it. Uh, I had to, I had to sign NDAs, you know, it's an interesting process in dealing with that caliber of buyer because their privacy is so important to them. So, and I wish I could say, Hey, look what we did. And I can't, I can't, um, you know, it, 
So a- anyway, yes, and I can't share it. <laughs> no worries. Which, which drives me crazy sometimes, but it, it is just how it is. It's with everyone. It's with every tiny housemaker. Nobody can reveal a celebrity client, but that's okay. No, we can't. We what's, can't. what's the I'm general sure. feedback you receive from people when when the tiny house is built and they start living in it? Oh, yeah. So you know, usually, you know, I'll ask any owner to we'll follow up ask him hey you gotta send me some pictures guys you know show me what you've done where you're living you know how how the house looks now um and it's it's rewarding it's very rewarding to all of us here to see somebody um enjoying their tiny house their environment um the components that we've done added to to make it theirs you know and then to see you know how they've staged it how they're living in it uh it's it's pretty cool that, that is way rewarding yeah all right lower parora it was really wonderful having a chat with you you are like one of the godfathers of tiny house industry and i've thoroughly enjoyed this conversation with you <laughs> well I, i i thank you for the compliment you know, it, one, thing, it is, one thing that I actually missed out of this conversation is that is tiny house suited for people who who are like seven or eight feet tall? Because how are they going to sleep in the loft? Well, you know what? Um, it, it, it sometimes we've got we make we've made changes. You know, we have made tiny. I can make a tiny house that's sixteen feet tall um, to accommodate some of these folks. It's just. Now the challenge is getting it to where they want to get it to. And then if they want to move it again, holy simoleones, you know, you, you got, you know, you're moving a, a, a giraffe. Yeah. All right, Lo, it was really wonderful having you with Home Crux today. And I'm really pleased that you showed up for the interview. And we've been covering your tiny houses for quite a long time. And I've been, I'll send you links if you have not read them already. And it yep. was really pleasant having a chat with you. And I hope we'll connect with more such chats and more such interviews in the future. I do as well. Thank you, Atesh. I appreciate it. Thanks for the reach out. Thanks to all of you for checking us out. Thank you. Luke, and once the interview out. goes live and we publish the article, we'll send it to you. All right. Fantastic. Well, I'm glad I didn't slip and say any 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 anything that was <laughs> off cut. All right. All right. Thank you, Lou. Wonderful. Time. Atesh, hey, thanks a lot. Take care. Good All talking right, to bye you. Bye-bye. Go to bed. It's late, man. Yeah, I got to sleep. <laughs> Talk to you later. Oh. Thank you. I just lost you. Let's... I hope you're able to hear me now. I can hear you, but I can't see you. You can cannot see, see you. No, did you close your eyes? No, no, I didn't close my eyes. I'm able to see you. All right. <laughs> Hold on here. Let's see what happened. There we go. All right. Are you able to see Annoying. me now? Yeah, you're ugly. Oh, <laughs> same goes for you as well. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. You're a that. handsome man. I have to admit, you're a very <laughs> handsome man. Not in those videos you've been making for tiny mountain houses, though. <laughs> those, those are fun. I, I enjoy making those. Those are, those are a kick. We started All doing right. those right. All right.